thank the Lord for each of you being here. God blessed us to allow us this opportunity. And then we've got some that are sick, not able to be out, so we we'll to remember them, hold them up before the Lord. But uh, we want to take the opportunity as we do the uh, announcements to do some prayer requests. We've got some folks in need of prayer this morning. Remember our Wednesday night service, our youth group starting at 6 o'clock. We encourage you to come be part of that. We'll, as I uh, so said before, we'll call off these names out here in this prayer service and we'll pray for them. Our youth get together and they eat together and have a time of the Lord. Uh, the time together and they also have the Word of God. So please encourage you to come be part of that. Our Sunday school, of course, at 10 o'clock. I just tell you, uh, good teachers. Brother Joe was talking about this morning, Sunday school, and he walked through the back. God has blessed us, and we encourage you to come and be part of Sunday school with us. And, of course, our 11 o'clock service is going to begin here. Uh, to continue to pray for the backpack ministry, let's not lose sight of that. We pray that God will continue to bless that and everything that uh, Larry Swift Jr. has passed on to these boys. It's been, a, it's been a blessing. God has used it. So please continue to pray for it. Next Sunday will be our fifth Sunday. We're going to bring Italian dishes. David Italian. Salads, desserts, and drinks. You don't go buy your Italian dish, right? I, I found an Italian chicken. Okay. I'm, ready for I'm glad. Amen. That's good. So David's got Italian chicken coming. You all look forward to that. But anyway, y'all remember that. Lord willing, next Sunday we're going to spend a little time together here, eat together, fellowship together after our service on Sunday morning. And uh, we we'll pray that you will come. Let's be part of that. Also, we want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. And we've got needs. We know that uh, in particular. But uh, we've got some, as I said, not with us, some that are sick and need to touch from the Lord. We'll begin here in the choir on the back rows. Anyone on the back row is prayer for you. And this is Pam. Yeah, pray for Grant. Pam, please remember Pam if y'all will. She's still sick. <coughs> Doing a little better, but we need to touch from the Lord for her. Okay. Well, and for Wendy this morning, also remember her. She's not doing well this morning. So touch for her. Amen. Yes, sir. Love and mean. Okay, pray for them. Wayne Harris and uh, Lee Redman. Yeah, Lee Redman and Dallin Camps. I don't really know the, the dates. So Lee Redman has got one more radiation treatment to go through. We keep praying for her. And God bless that. She will be very important. And Denise also today. Thank the Lord. So Miss Sarah, since she's been home, apparently has done really good. Sarah Hammond. So y'all keep praying for her. Y'all continue to bless her. 93? 92. 92 years young. So God bless her. I tell you. Prayer request. Spoken day. Bruce? I have several ones spoken. Several ones spoken. Did he? Y'all pray for me. I'm back. Kill me. Come on. We will this morning. Amen. It is a need of prayer. So we're going to pray for you. Anyone else back here on this side? Sir, please. Yes, sir. I have unspoken. I'm unspoken. Thank 
prayer request. a good one. I'm glad I want to mention that. that uh, Tracy, which is, it'll be coming up this next check will be about a year, I think, since she was first diagnosed. And they said that it was just for the blow of the one. So the lab results was great. So that's been a blessing to all of them. It's giving God for a What else? Okay, Randy Ward, please be praying for her there. Uh, I know she's been diagnosed, I believe, with her. I think they thank you for Celiac disease and uh, problem with diabetes. And uh, so anyway, she'll be going to Birmingham. Right? Okay. I'll see you next time. So, if you will, want to, uh, Bob, can you tell me, is Terry still in the hospital? No, uh, uh, when he was in there, he uh, developed a kidney stone, and they had to take it out of surgery. But uh, we got the word this morning that he actually is in my back in the house. So, he's actually home now. God uh, bless his heart. Yeah, he's never left. If y'all will, uh, I know some of you might remember a guy by the name of Tim Sanders who's been pastoring in Mariana for a long year. And he had preached over one time in our uh, gospel gathering down at uh, Mount Zion, Tim Sanders, but he passed away yesterday. Uh, he's been battling diabetes for quite a few years. Oh, and, you know, Chris Carroll has always kept up with him. He told me that. Uh, passed away. So please remember his family. Pray for them. And uh, he's really a young man. He's uh, maybe 50 or 80 uh, Also, uh, with Chris Carroll, Sylvia Moss, I know both of them have got COVID there at uh, Mount Zion. And there's another couple of them at sick. I'm not sure their situation. I just know they weren't going to try to have services this morning because of the situation that we are around. So remember them. Chris seemed to be doing a little better when I like to communicate with him, but uh, keep praying for them. They need a touch from the Lord. And uh, like I already mentioned, I'm going to keep praying for her. David asked, Brazil asked prayer for David Jasak. Uh, he's battling throat cancer, and they're going to have to put a few men. It's a fellow they would work with you back in the past, so please pray for them. Remember them and hold them up before the Lord. Amen. And, uh, also, let's keep praying for one another here at Oak Road. We can see we've got folks that are out. There are some that are sick in our bones. Some may be on the road, so remember these. 
also uh, the church as a whole. We know we got to keep praying for fellow believers. As the Bible tells us, we pray one for another that we might be healed, you know, that the liver help us in our situation. Uh, for the Lighthouse Ministry, Brother Biddy and the faith folks that labor with him, the Highway Shepherd Ministry, uh, the missionaries are in the field, the hospitals, and the nursing homes. Uh, for Miss Shirley and Miss Annette there at the nursing home, and also, uh, I guess, uh, if Betty get to come home, she did get to come home. So thank God Betty Murphy got to come on home. Thank the Lord for that. Remember these two, still there at the nursing home, holding them up before the Lord. Uh, our first responders, keep praying for them. Uh, also, our nation, the need see that, and I'm sure most of you heard that <clears throat> there were at least 10 people killed in California, I think, last night. And, uh, in a shoot, and then there was uh, some riots in uh, Atlanta, I believe, that was going on. And, you know, which I know in this world, ever since sins come in, there's always been this thing. But we here, there's so many things right now. Our nation needs here. God help us. Have mercy upon us. As our brother shared this morning in Sunday school, that we we going to have to determine in our hearts we're going to pray more. We'll pray for our nation. Pray for one another. Also, the jails and the prisons. Our military and their families, our governor and his family, our local officials, uh, those that's in leadership positions, our youth and our teachers here, to always pray for Israel. Remember the folks in Afghanistan and Ukraine, our president and our leaders. Keep praying for all of these. We've got to keep holding each other up before the Lord. And as I said, there's many folks here on our prayer list. We'll call them all off on these tonight, the Lord with them. Anyone else before we go to the Lord in prayer this morning? Um, unspoken. 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 All right. Well, God bless you. Anyone else? Uh, we want to go to the Lord in prayer. <coughs> God to help us here. Bind us together. Brother Tony, I'm going to ask you to lead us. And let's just all pray together. That's God's Father, just come to the Lord and just thank you.
We're going to be looking and reading some out of Psalm 100 this morning. And I want to encourage you. you. Think about what he said in the song. Jesus carried my sins with him there. Where? To the cross of Calvary. He who knew no sin. The sinless Lamb of God loves me enough. He took old Larry McGowan's sins and bore on the bloody cross. Yes. He saved my soul. Yes. Not because there was any good thing in me. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus loves me. We want to pray. A psalm of praise begins here. In Psalm 100. And I want us to think about this morning the very first thing it says here. Because make a joyful noise. This is the fourth Sunday in 2023. And we've talked some about, I believe maybe last week, of... Uh, you know, what it, our heritage is going to mean, what it means to those that come after us, how that we follow after the Lord. And on Wednesday night, we talked a little bit about the presence of the Lord. And we want to encourage you as we begin this new year. I mean, we're still in the first month of it. I know for us old folks, it seems like it's gone already. That's this quick. But it's, uh, it's still a new year in the first month of it. And we got an opportunity as believers. As I'd said, God's not confined by time. A day's a thousand years, a thousand years a day with the Lord. But He set us within the framework of time as human beings. To give us a perspective to help us to recognize and realize that we have a space of time upon this earth. Before one day, hallelujah, we stand before the Lord and give an account unto Him. But in this, that in, in that sense of time, we have an opportunity to make a joyful noise. And that's what I thought about when I said here. I was looking at the thing of noise and what all that represented. It talked about it indicates with voices or songs of rejoicing or thanksgiving, musical instruments of any kind, you know, whether it be clapping or, or tapping our toes, as we might say. Anything like that is a, a noise. But he said... Not just a noise, he said, make a joyful noise. He said, unto the Lord, all ye lands. And so as believers, I, I want us to look a little bit. We're going to just take a few of the things here in the, this chapter. And we're going to talk about them a little. But I'm going to read Psalm uh, chapter one, or 100 to you first. And then we're going to talk about a few little things about making a joyful noise unto the Lord. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Now in essence, and I believe it's a good thing here in our, our situation, it's speaking to all of God's creation, of whether they were Jew or Gentile. He said, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of his pasture. He entered to his gates with thanksgiving, and to his court with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. We had been looking a little bit out of Psalm 100 on Wednesday night. And so... I've been looking some at it because there's so many things in, in it to me that it says when, you know, one of the things that he points out to us is the things that are his, not only his presence, but he begins to talk about we're his people and it is his pasture, praise God. We're to enter into his courts, hallelujah, and we're to bless his name. You know, it's centered our worship and our Allegiance, you could say, is unto the God of glory. I mean, I'm glad that God, because of our frailty as men, 
give us, you know, these institutions that we have in this life. Uh, just as we know, we come down to Oak Grove Baptist Church, you know, to get together and the fellowship together. But the key that we have to remember with the Lord is, hallelujah, it's all He is, praise God. All belongs to Him. So He tells us to make a joyful noise. And it may be, as I said, with our voices, that there'll be a joy, hallelujah, in our speech and when we talk. There'll be joy when we sing our song. That there'll be joy when we give forth our thanksgiving. They praise God when we're those that are able to hear to play upon a musical instrument that, praise God, it would be a joyful playing that we do. They praise God we would recognize and realize that sometimes we sit there and we, with the music, that it would be with joy. They praise God when we begin to clout unto the Lord that it would be a joyful noise. You see, all of that has to come from within. We, that's an outward thing. But if it's to be joyful, it's going to have to begin in our hearts, hallelujah, in the presence of the Lord, glory to God. So I want to just encourage us a little bit. We're going to read a few verses and look at a few things as we talk about making a joyful noise. And one thing we're going to focus around somewhat is the fact of when we come together up in Jesus' name. When we get together, hallelujah, as God's children, you know, we have this great and glorious opportunity of this nation that we can take Sunday, hallelujah, as we've chosen, you know, this Word of God somewhat, I believe, directed us the first day of the week. And we get to come aside, hallelujah, and we get to meet together. We do that. We get to, fortunately, that if we look at it and have this opportunity, but a lot of times we get together on Wednesday night and we have a time that we pray and we can sing and we rejoice together in the Lord. That's a blessing from God, making joyful noise. So the first thing I want to remind you of is it's not just a psalm in Psalm 100, but in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17, he tells us to do some things. To help us maybe to recognize what we need. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. He says, as God's children. He said, holy and beloved. Boy, is that a wonderful thing? I'm holy because He is holy. Hallelujah. He has imputed unto me His righteousness. And I'm beloved of the Father. Oh, I tell you, we, we ought to rejoice. He said, put on, though, bowels of mercies. Let it be that glory to God, the mercy that's been shown to us, we show forth to others. Put on kindness and humbleness of mind. Meekness and long suffering. Forbearing one another. In other words, that's putting up with each other. And forgiving one another. Glory to God. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So see, we've got to get ourselves ready. Above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. So that it pulls it all together. And now here, listen to what he has to say. He tells us to get our hearts ready. Now let the peace of God rule in your heart. To the which also you are called in one body. I mean, glory to God, every born again believer has been baptized by the Holy Spirit of God into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and my sisters, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Now listen, we're talking about, we want to make a joyful noise. I told you it's got to begin in our hearts. So he tells us, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts, that we would receive that of God. Remember, we want to make a joyful noise. I mean, I can, we can or we do as human beings, we put on whatever the face we need for whatever the situation we may be in. But he ain't even dealing with all of that. He's dealing with the fact, let it be a joyful sound, hallelujah, that comes from us. Let it be glory to God that we have a recognition of some things. He says, sing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it on the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Now listen, He gives us this encouragement, 
make a joyful noise. So within our hearts there, we begin to sing and make melody unto the Lord. You know, when I'm out there and glory to God, I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing, we have to do in this life. Then it might be in my heart, hallelujah, that song, as we hear it sometimes said, a song in a night season, or maybe in the midst of our everyday doings, that we you have a song that comes to heart. And we begin to make melody unto the Lord. Or maybe it's just a song, glory to God, that God gives to us that we can sing unto Him. And so He tells us to make a joyful noise. In Ephesians 5, 19, He says it this way. He tells us, speaking to your sailors. I know, I know. Well, boy, what's wrong with them? They're talking to their sailors. Well, He said, we're to speak to our sailors in this manner. Not murmuring under our breath and grumbling and fussing. We want to make a joyful noise. So we speak ourselves in songs. You know, in other words, the Word of God. Hallelujah. That will that'll help me, praise God, in my everyday life. That I might have a verse, as I've said before, that the Lord spoke to me about. You know, and there was some that I had to sort of set aside, especially when I was younger, and I could put them to memory better. The glory to God would be something that when I was going along the journey and I'd find myself in a fish and my mind on the things that didn't need to be, that praise God, I could begin to think about a song, you know, or a word from the Word of God. Or a, a hymn or a spiritual song. You know, hallelujah, those things that will bless and help me singing then and making melody in my heart to the Lord. And so to make a joyful noise, and it be in our voices that there be a, when we sing a song, it not just be we sung the song and said the words, but it be one of joy, one that when we give a, a you know to say, I mean hallelujah. When I get ready to have a bite to eat, and I just simply say thank you Jesus. Let it be that there would be some joyfulness, hallelujah, that I would recognize. Boy, listen, every good thing coming down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, that the shadow turning, hallelujah, He gives every good gift. And so as I sat down to enjoy those that bounty, that it be in my heart a joyful noise, hallelujah, would come forth out of me. And so He tells us then to make a joyful noise, that we want to recognize and realize that. And we would see that. Now the second thing that I want to tell you is this. I want us to talk about. We're going to make a joyful noise with our voices. You know, our songs. With the thanksgivings that we give. With our clapping. Or, our, or you know, whatever it is that we may be doing. That we make noise about. Let it be a joyful noise. He said this in verse 4. He said, enter into his gates. Glory to God, we're to, I thought about this now, and I want to show you what I believe that we can take and use here for you and I in this day and hour. He said to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That we're to take that that leads to the gathering of God's people, the place for public worship, and into his courts with thanksgiving. In other words, one of the things that I can do, hallelujah, as a believer, because there'll be a lot of things the enemy is going to try to bring against you as you go to enter into his courts. Now, in this respect, they were speaking about the temple. I believe that you can any, enter into his courts in any place you may be, but we have this set aside. We try to come together up as God's children, you know, and so we enter into his courts. How are we going to come? Well, we'll make a joyful noise. Well, if I come, hallelujah, you know, and I'm considering God's goodness unto me. I mean, because I know that there's a lot of things that you face in this life. There's a lot of pressures. There's a lot of things that we deal with. Sometimes there's things that really breaks our hearts, that makes us sad. Things that we, just as we said earlier, you know, we have people on the prayer list, people that's in difficult circumstances. We hear about situations where, you know, human beings is killing one another. And I mean, where there's heartache and suffering and children that we 
And some oftentimes see that don't have enough food, that don't have home for folks to love them. So there are all those things that we're going to be dealing with, but we want to be able to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. See, that's not some kind of mirth. It's not some kind of, you know, uh, boy, I mean, everything in me feels good. No, it's to recognize, you see, within my heart. That I want to enter into here, hallelujah. I want to come to the place for public worship. Into his course. And I want to remember my blessings. I want to be thankful. And that's one of the reasons I'd say to us sometime. And I know we may too much. It may at times. But it is to me a wondrous thing. That we have this freedom that we have. That I can get up on a Sunday morning. And I can actually never cross my mind that somebody in government is going to stop me from coming to church. I mean, I don't even have to consider that, you see. I know we sometimes think about we read these articles and see things, and we know that they're just like we found out during this situation in 2020, 2021, 2022, that they were trying to, well, they were, they were shutting down churches in places. And we were blessed, I believe, what we have here in this area. But we know that in general, we get to come and gather up. And I have to remind myself, because I'm not a world traveler. Some of you have been around a lot of places in this world. And have probably been places where there was not a freedom to just go and gather up in the house of God. Because there are many places in the world that way. So one of the things that I should do when I get ready to enter into the gates, hallelujah, that I come to the gathering place where I'm going to meet with some of God's people and there's going to be a place of public worship, that I should remind myself, hallelujah, boy, I'm blessed. That, that puts a joy in my heart that I can have that. And I, the heartache of it is that I don't appreciate it like I should and so, over in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 23 and 25, through 25, he'll tell us a little something about it. He says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Now, why would we, in other words, I confess that Christ has saved me. Hallelujah. It is saved by grace. Hallelujah. Through faith, that not of myself, the gift of God. It's not a work that's any man should boast. And the reason that I can't, should hold fast, listen, he is faithful that promise, speaking of Christ. He said, let us consider one another. Now, what are we going to do? When you consider one another, you really care about the other believer's situation, other people's situation, and you provoke. Now, when we say the word provoke, we don't mean it like we do it a lot of times in this world. But what it is, is to stir others up unto love and the good works. 25, he says, not for safety, the sin of ourselves together. You see, we have this opportunity. God has commanded us, and then he encourages us to fellowship with fellow believers. To have that opportunity, you see, that we have to get together and to encourage one another. Help one another along this journey, praise God. To pray for one another, as we've said this morning. We had fellow believers that we called out. We wanted to pray for them together as a people. Because the truth is, the Bible tells us this, and I truly believe that it's true. I've seen it in action. But the Bible tells us in the book of James that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much or it produces results in the life of those that are prayed for. And no doubt that they, as Bob and them, has kept up with Terry. You think about his situation, condition he's in, first thing is God had great mercy in that he allowed him to ever come home. But only, not only from that, here he goes in the condition he's in, he gets sick, and I'll tell you, God's bringing him home again. You see, prayer, and I mean, when I look at it, I think about when you mentioned somebody did Tracy this morning, Wanda. I mean, the outlook was not good, but glory to God. God in his great mercy. And so if we get this opportunity to come together and we can pray for one another, we can encourage one another, not forsaking that assembling together because it's one of the opportunities we have. Now, I thank you for all the means we have of communication now. Because, you know, uh, 
we got all these things. We send out these uh, prayer requests. And the, I know different groups in here that's got all these. That you send them out. I know the ladies has got a thing. They send out their prayer requests. And we even got a little thing called Old Men of Oak Road. And glory to God, we send out prayer requests. And they start to pray, you know. And I thank God for that. Because, but here it is good. We get to come together and pray together. And hallelujah, we come and we not forsaken the assembly. You know, even though we may not always can be here, but hopefully as much as we can. And what we do then, we encourage one another. See, exhorting one another. And so much more we don't need to do it as we see that day approaching. And so, he gives us this. We enter to his gates, come to that gathering place with God's people, that public worship that we have. And we're able to come in with thanksgiving. It helps us if we come in in that manner. And though he tells us then, when we come into his courts with praise and be thankful with, unto him, because we're coming with, into his gates with thanksgiving, he said, then we can bless his name. <coughs> In other words, it might be that, glory to God, if I'm putting my heart and my mind into that place, as I come to the household of God, I want to give honor to God. I want to acknowledge him as God. I recognize, as he said, what did he say in verse 5? He's good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endureth to all generations. And so it, it helps me then, hallelujah, as I come into these doors. And the glory to God, I'm able, better able, hallelujah, to make a joyful noise. It may be just a simple, God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. Or, you know, listen, I love you. Uh, you know, I want to know how you're doing. Or, you know, I want to encourage you. Boy, I tell you, you encourage me. You know, and I, I have some sometimes that I'll read things or hear something from them. And it encourages me. So it's a joyful noise. And then we make it. And it might would be that it would stir our hearts, hallelujah, to be able, praise God, to do what He's going to tell us to do when we come into His presence with singing. That glory to God, there's a song in our heart. And so we can come to bless His name, to be reminded of that truth, hallelujah. But not only that, He tells us to enter in, to, to begin with thanksgiving, praise God, to recognize what we have, hallelujah, as fellow believers. It might stir our hearts. Do you know that sometimes when you come in, if you happen to have a praise, if you happen, and of course we could go over and look in the book of Corinthians, he'll tell us, you know, all these things that we can do. If you happen to have a praise, you know, about something God's done for you. Or, you know, if you happen to have, uh, uh, just been reminded, listen, I'm so glad, you know, Jesus, he, he saved me. Or, or, you know, I heard that my brother, my sister in Christ, that God healed them, blessed them. You know, or come in and say, listen, boy, this week was tough, but, you know, God, he, he just came along at the right time. And we begin, hallelujah, coming in, hallelujah, with our hearts ready to make a joyful noise unto God. It might be when we make a joyful noise, somebody else, hallelujah, want to make a joyful noise. They want to praise God too. And I told you, you know, the other day, we was talking about last Sunday, and I had different ones talk to me about it a little bit. It does matter. I'll tell you, one of the things that blesses me right now is we got a full choir with our younger people. They can learn to sing unto the Lord. Not that if they got great talent. Thank God some of them got more than some of us have, but hallelujah. But the thing I'm saying is, it's there that they find out, well, listen, it's good to praise the Lord. It's good to sing unto Him. And so we come in and, then, and we encourage one another, you see, because one of the reasons we come together. I know we'll say, yeah, well, I just have to do that. I've got to go to church, you know, because God says so, or He's going to knock me in the head. God's got a real reason for wanting to gather up together as His believers. That's how it works in our life. It helps us, especially if we do it halfway the right way. But you see, we're to come in, enter into His gates in that manner. And so then He tells us if we'll do this, begin to bless His name. Then what he told us in verse 2, he said this. And I want to read the second part first. Come before his presence with singing. Now listen, I got to look at it again. And thinking about, boy, I tell you, there's a lot of good things, hallelujah. 
if we come before his presence with sin. We have that opportunity. We can encourage one another. He tells us in, uh, in Galatians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, he reminds us there that he said, let us not be weary and well doing. If you see them, we shall reap if we faint not. Verse 10 says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men. It's best unto them for a household of faith. We're coming into the presence of God. We can encourage and help one another. In Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 18, he tells us that through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. He says in verse 19, he says, Now therefore you are no more strangers or foreigners. You see, we're fellow citizens with the saints, and we're of the same household when we speak about it in, in the spiritual realm of God. He said we're built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple of the Lord. And listen to what he tells us. You see, you want to make a joyful noise. Well, we've got to help one another. If we're going to come before His presence and sing, we've got to be a help to one another. He said, In whom you also are builded together for a habitation of God and the Spirit. We get an opportunity. Now, we can do that anywhere out here. You meet a fellow believer, wherever it may be, we can be an encouragement to one another. If I could tell you how many times I worked in that federal prison at times, but it'd be all around y'all kind of mess that all of the blue when I was just not worth a dime, a believer would come by and just encourage me. In other words, we can become a habitation of God. Now listen, he dwells in the wells. But to have to make joyful noises. I needed that fellow believer to stir up, hallelujah, the Spirit of God. Because right at that time, I was walking where Brother Gerald said we walk a lot of time in the flesh. And I can tell you, God the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, stirred up. You know, it's kind of like it was Elizabeth and Mary. Or when old John heard Mary's voice, he was still in the wood. He left for joy. And what did Elizabeth do? She began to prophesy to the Lord. Well, there's been times when I've been going along there and I've been in that kind of fish and then I come across that believer. And boy, they had done, they had a fire in their soul. Oh, Habitation of God. That's what we become as believers, you see. Dwelling place for God. And that way, I'll be able, hallelujah, when I come to the presence of the Lord, we can be, hallelujah, a help to others, especially those of the household of faith. Come before his presence sing in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. He just gives us a little bit here, and I'm going to just read this. Take time. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same as the beginning with God, speaking of Jesus. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life then was the light of him. And the light shines in darkness. There's the door. And the darkness cannot overcome it. Can't overcome that light. For the man said, for God, whose name was John. He said, that same came for witness. Bear witness of the light. John came telling about the light. You see, that's what that's what that fellow believed did for me. That all men through him might believe. He was not that light. But let me tell you what he did. He bore witness of that light. That stirred a joyful noise in my soul. That was the true light which cut life every man that cometh into the world. Over in the book of 1 John, he tells us in verse 5, This then is the message that we've heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Hallelujah. And in him is no darkness at all. So you know, a joyful noise, hallelujah, that I need to make, praise God. I need to enter into his gates. I, as I come together with God's people, as I begin to have a, a time to assemble with them, and I'm moved, hallelujah, by, by the presence of God in their life, hallelujah, it begins to stir me. I get better able to make a joyful noise 
I can serve him, hallelujah, with gladness. I can worship him. I come to the place as I, I'm around fellow believers, members of the body of Christ. I'm glad for this public gathering. But you see, that sometimes it may be where two or three are gathered together. It may not always be, you know, where there's 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or whatever it may be. But i tell you what. We get to come before His presence with singing. And the coming to the presence of God is what I talked about on Wednesday night. Is to come where there's light. And you know what we, we do as believers? We need light. You see, when we're one of His, the darkness is always seeking to overcome us. Because men love darkness because their deeds are evil. The fallen nature of man is pulled toward that. But you see, a believer needs the light so we can grow. So glory to God, hallelujah. We can be, as he said, making a joyful noise. I think about, you know, when you uh, always, we talk about it, have said it a lot. When you listen to the God creation of God, all the animals and the sounds that they make, what we always talk about when the Front frogs are hollering for rain, they're just calling on God. You know, He's the maker. He's the creator. When those flowers are blooming up toward heaven, make a joyful noise. That's what He says. And so in us, you see, we need light. We need to recognize. Think what He said here in 1 Thessalonians 5 4 and 5. He says this You, brethren, are not in darkness. You see, you have the light. The light of God is in every born again believer. Sometimes we put a cover over the camera. We try to hide the sin on the heel. He said, But you are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. See, unaware of the hour we're in, you're children of light. You're children of the day. You're not of the night, nor of darkness. So when I come, you see, that's one of the things with God's children. I'm with the light. I mean, that's what he is. It's, it's the light being manifested into this world. That's why it mattered when I was walking along there and not in the place I, my head didn't be, that I got into the light. God bless you. Because when you're children of the day, you're looking for the light. You may not know it, but it's light. You see, that's what our gathering together needs to be. We want to be not just have to come show up, preacher, we've got to do this thing, you know, we've got to do this thing, this thing. We really want to come and I mean, we want to enjoy the light. We want to make a joyful noise. It ought to be that we go out of here, hallelujah, that if we got things right with God, you know, when He's dealt with us and, you know, convicted us and brought us to the place we can deal with our sin, then He says, listen, rejoice. Go out of here with a, with a joyful sound. One hallelujah as a fellow believer. I can't even imagine. I, I can't even just think about David in the shape he got into. He was a dancing before the Lord. And everybody didn't like it. David was enjoying it. He's having a good time before God. It don't hurt us to have a good time. We go out of here because we'll make a difference in the world. See, if the light's manifested, if it's revealed. And he told us this, he said in John 8 and 12, he said this, and it's about Jesus getting to them saying, I am the light of the world. If you'll follow me, what he tells is possible for everybody says that. Follow me. Just stay with Jesus. He said, if he that follows me, you don't walk in darkness. You have light. You rejoice. I mean, there'll be joy. That's where the joyful noise comes from. Because as believers, we get a lot of things that say, hinders that. Grieves the Spirit of God in our life. Causes us to not really enjoy our liberty in Christ. We truly have it. We just don't act like it all times. We have a freedom to worship. 
privacy. But see, a joyful noise, oftentimes when you read this, it helps someone else to make a joyful noise. Whatever it may be. If nothing else, you know what it be? He said, our speech will always be seasoned with grace. That's the work of the Spirit of God in the life of a believer. Because I'm going to tell you, our speech, when it's controlled by our flesh, is anything but edifying. The boy, when it's controlled by the Spirit of God. Even if there's a rebuke, it'll be in love. So we need to be able to make a joyful noise. And we want to be, I think you all do, I think we want to come and we want to be able to say, look, I may have been tired today, I may have been wore out, I've had a rough week, I, I there's trouble going on in my life. You know, and all of that's there. And I, no, I can't do anything about that. I mean, God can, but I, I know this. And he'll give me the opportunity. And if I'll just enter into the gates, consider my blessings. <coughs> my I believe that I'll be able to make a joyful noise. And you know what I'll ultimately be able to do? Serve the Lord in grace. And I'll tell you what. There's something the world does maybe just the believers that serve you with gladness. Am I mad? Because I'll tell you the truth sometime that if you ever try this, Pastor, it's easy enough to believe the enemy and you feel sorry for yourself, or it's easy enough to believe the enemy and you get to thinking, you know, really. Ain't many folks really like me. Ain't many folks want to listen to you. I mean, all those things, he will do that. He'll tell you. And in every aspect of your life, whatever yours may be. And so, my service, if I'm not careful, it'll look like there's no joy in it. And it will be served, served. I ought to be saying hallelujah, thank you Jesus. And I ain't saying just say it, my heart needs to believe it. Because it's the only way it'll make a difference. So let's make a joyful noise. Father, we thank you and we praise you. You allowed us to be together here for just a little bit. We can hear Lord God, even as you said, the cloud be the dust of your feet, hallelujah. And I follow you in all the thunders. Lord, it's you the God of glory. Help us this day, I pray, to rejoice. Hallelujah. That we serve a God. Hallelujah. That encourages us to make a joyful noise. It tells us to come into your presence with Satan. That in the midst of all of this old world, that we can look forward to this. That we know you're ever present with us. You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. You're going to be with us always. And as Paul stated, he said, and then evidently, hallelujah, one day as Jesus had promised, you will all be in the presence of the Lord forever. So in the midst of these troubles and trials of this life, help us, Lord, to make a joyful moment to be able to serve you with gladness. I pray now if there's one in our midst, Lord, that doesn't know you're saved, and that you'll save them even now. Call them unto yourself. And help it be so that as they look about and see a fellow believer, a believer from around about, that glory to God, even in the midst of this old world, with his trials and his troubles, Jesus said it. He said, listen, in this world you shall have tribulation. There will be trials. But he said, be a good cheer. Make a joyful noise. And Jesus said, I've overcome the world. So help us, Lord, in the midst of it. Make a joyful noise. I pray, God, that it'll be that it'll touch the hearts of those that may not know you're saved. And that one will be, hallelujah, one of yours. They'll come to that place, they'll call upon your name. 
made a promise, who shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Help us as believers. Make that joyful noise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. I bless you. Give our services. Good night. Thank you.